Well, hello and how are you, friends? This here is Shenandoah Briscoe. Coming to you live right here in St. Charles, Missouri. Yes, sir. First state capital from 1821 to 1826. Yes, sir. Hey, that there being said, this is, uh, let's see, Tuesday, uh, February the 2nd. 2016, this here will be blog number 356. That's right. Okie dokie. Hey, then, because, uh, you know, yesterday we had that uh, alert warning that beeped in on us and kind of threw us off schedule a little bit, but that's okay. Hey. Uh, oh, by the way, if you're going to follow the Daily Bread, like I said, I won't be able to read it to you anymore due to copyright issues. So um, you can jump on over to um, OBR, or Our Daily Bread, ODB.org, and uh, pick it up over there. And if you're going to, uh, you'll probably want to turn your Bible to... Um, Second Chronicles 21, 4 through 20. And the title of your topic the, on the Daily Bread schedule will be uh, Leave a Legacy. So, that'll be what you'll be reading uh, for today. Leave a Legacy. Alright, well alrighty then. Okay. Um bum 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 bum. Okay doke. Just wanted to let you know about that. So uh you'll be able to uh go ahead and follow that. Go on over there and they like to have a little donation if at all possible, so hey, you know. And they like to be able to um uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Oh, uh, they like for they like for you to be able to come over to their site and pick it up from there. So, therefore, I will not be reading it any longer. Now, uh, do do from that I would do short stories, but I don't have any short stories to sort about. So, therefore, uh, we're not going to do any short story today. Should I sing? I don't know. My voice doesn't uh, seem to be too rough, so maybe I will. Uh, then again, maybe I won't. But I think I should. All right, give me a second. I'm going to, uh, first off, take a drink of H2O. Good stuff. That's God's nectar right there. He says, take part of the water, my friends. Um, speaking of that, that is a good song. Uh, it's not the one I was thinking of, but it's a different one. Wait in the water, wait in the water, children, and we in the water. Something, something in the water. I don't know. That was a uh, uh, Aboriginian, Aboriginian, Aboriginists, Aboriginists. Uh, song for the uh slaves on during the uh railroad the the slave trader railroad you know where what's her goof was dragging them slaves from here and there what was her name um i don't remember what her name was offhand but the 
does that mean I can't uh, talk about it? No, it does not. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Hold on, I'm going to find a small uh, short story to read. And we'll do a short story today. Okay? Well, all righty then. Give me a second. Okay, I'm going to try to kick this one off. It's called Rapunzel. All right, here we go. We're going to kick it off real fast. Because it looks like a long one. Once upon a time, there was a man and a woman who had long, but who had long, but not to avail, wished for a child. Finally, the woman came to believe that the good Lord would faithful would fulfill her wish. Through the small rear window of the people's house, they could see into a splendid garden that was filled with the most beautiful flowers and herbs. The garden was surrounded by a high wall, and no one dared enter, because it belonged to a sorceress who posed great power and was feared by everyone. One day the woman was standing at the window and she saw a bed planted with the most beautiful Rapunzel. It looked so fresh and green that she longed for someone. It was her greatest desire to eat some of the Rapunzel. The desire increased with every day and not knowing how to to get any, she became miserably ill. Her husband was frightened and asked her, What ails you, dear wife? Oh, she answered, If you don't get some Rapunzel from that garden behind our house, I shall die. The man, who loved her dearly, thought, Before you let your wife die, you must get her some of the Rapunzel whatever the cost. So, as it was getting dark, he climbed over the high wall into the sorcerer's garden, hastily dug up a handful of Rapunzel, and took it to his wife. She immediately made a salad from it, which she devoured eagerly. It tasted so very good that by the next day her desire for more had grown threefold. If she went to were to have any peace, the man would have to climb the garden once the garden wall once again. Thus he set forth once again just as it was getting dark, but no sooner had he climbed over the wall than to his horror he saw the sorceress standing by there before him. How can you dare, she asked with, ang with an angry look, to climb into my garden and, like a thief, steal my Rapunzel? You will pay for this. Oh, he answered, let mercy overrule justice. I came to do this out of necessity. My wife saw your Rapunzel from our window, and she longed for it. She had such longing came over her that she would be die she would die if she did not get some some to eat. The sorceress angry sorceress's anger about aboted aboted abated somewhat, and she said if these things are as you say, I will allow you to take much Rapunzel as you want, but under one condition. You must give me the child that your wife will be bring into the world. It will do well, and I will take care of it like a mother. Doink. So, in his fear, the man agreed to everything. When the woman gave birth, the sorceress appeared and named the little girl Rapunzel and took her away. 
Rapunzel became the most beautiful child under the sun, and when she was twelve years old, the fairy locked her in a tower that stood in the forest and had neither a door nor a stairway, but only a tiny window at the very top. And when the sorceress wanted to enter, she stood below and called out, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. And Rapunzel would, had splendid long hair, as fine as spun gold. Then she had heard the sorceress, when she heard the sorceress's fur voice, she untangled her braids and, and would then arrive send them out the window and let her hair fall twenty yards to the ground. Then the sorcerers climbed up it. A few years later it happened that the king's son was riding through the forest. As he approached the tower he heard a song so beautiful that he stopped to listen. It was Rapunzel who, was, who had passed the time by singing with her sweet voice. The prince wanted to climb up to her and looked for a door in the tower, but none was to be found. He rode home, but the song had so touched his heart that he returned to the forest every day and listened to it. One time he was thus standing between, behind a tree when he saw the sorceress approach uh, approach and heard her say, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Then Rapunzel let down her strands of hair and the sorceress climbed up them to her. If that, if that is the ladder into the tower, then sometime I will try my luck. And the next day, just as it was beginning to get dark, he went to the tower and called out, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The hair fell down, and the prince climbed up. And after Rapunzel was terribly frightened when a man, such as she had never seen before, climbed into her, However, the prince began talking to her very, in a very friendly manner, telling her that his heart had, belonged, had been so touched by her singing that he could have no peace until he had seen her in person. Then Rapunzel lost her fear, and when he asked if she would take him as her husband, she thought, he would rather have me than would old frog Gothel. She said, she said yes, and pleased, and placed her hand into his. She and I would go with you gladly, but I do not know how to get down. Every time, every time that you come, bring a strand of silk from which I will weave a ladder, and when it is finished, I will climb down, and you can take me away on your horse. They arranged that, that he would come to her every evening, for the old woman came by day. The sorceress did not notice what was happening until one day Rapunzel said to her, Fraugarth, Gollerth, Frau Gollerth, don't know her name, it's Frau something or other, tell me why it is that you are more difficult to pull up than is the young prince who will be arriving any moment now. You godless child, cries the sorceress. What am I hearing from you? I thought I had removed you from the whole world, but you have deceived me, my, me nevertheless. 
In her anger, she grabbed Rapunzel's beautiful hair, wrapped it in a few times around her left hand, grasped a pair of scissors, and with her right hand, and snip, snip, cut it all off. And she would so unmercifully that she took Rapunzel into the wilderness where she suffered greatly. I'll bet you I'm running out of time. Oh, yeah. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, I guess I will conclude this tomorrow because, well, hey, uh, that's just what we do. Guess my short story wasn't so short. Anyway, um... This here is Shenandoah Briscoe St. Oh, wait a minute. Goodbye, my friends. It's time to go. Goodbye, my friends. It's time to go. Why, I hate to leave you, but I really must go. Goodbye, my friends. Goodbye. This is Shenandoah Briscoe saying, Hello, and how are you? You know, God loves you, and so do I. So be blessed in Jesus' name. Come back and see me tomorrow, because, well, I'll be here. I hope you are too.